Hello everybody, uh, today I'm trying once again to win a contest and to explain what I'm doing at the same time. Last time it didn't go extremely well, but I hope to do better with practice. So today we are solving a code forces contest. Um, yeah, there are five problems, everything is somewhat as usual. The fourth problem is a bit more complex. The author of the contest is a Richta, which is known to give interesting problems about bears, so that's what I'm hoping to see today. As usual, code force is not very slow, but not very fast in the beginning, but I've managed to open the first problem already, so we can start with that. Um, so we have a few soldiers. Uh, and a group of soldiers is effective if all the names are different. And there are N soldiers. And for every K consecutive soldiers, we note if there is or there is not two soldiers with the same name in the sequence. Uh, so we are given this sequence and we need to find a possible set of names. for the soldiers. And we need to find any solution. And it is guaranteed the solution exists. So how does one solve this problem? Well, as soon as there is a no, it means all previous ones were different. And then there is a yes. It means that this one has repeated uh, one of the previous ones. And it makes sense to make it repeat the earliest one so that we don't have any bearing on the further on the further computations and so on. But every time we say yes, we repeat the name as it was k times before, otherwise we just create a new name and that should just be just do it for this problem. So it's not extremely complex and let's write the code. Okay, so number of the soldiers, we read the number of the soldiers and the size of a group. And finally, we have uh, repeat. Let's just read, create a new one of size m, and then we start with k minus 1, go up to n, and we say repeat in equals in next equals yes. Okay. And finally, mm, yeah, we just need to generate names. Okay, string names. So we have a names. So if repeat, then we just borrow an old name. I minus k plus one. Otherwise. Uh, we generate name given this number. And finally, we print the names. We can do it in the same loop. If i is more than zero, print the space. Then we print the name. And then we print line. And so we need, just need to generate a unique, generate a unique name with a given number. So they can have first letter uppercase, all the rest is lowercase. Okay. So since we have at most 26 squared, we can just do this. Just take two characters like this, modulo 26. Okay, and that's it. That should be two. This should do this problem. Okay, let's see. Of course, it will give a different answer on the samples. But let's see whether it makes sense. No, no. Oh, so no means actually if it's not effective. So no means that we should repeat. Okay, that, that's certainly a valuable check to do. Okay, 
Okay, so here all names are the same. And then here, yeah, here we repeat A, B. And so eight soldiers have a repeat. Yes, that seems to be good for me. Let's try to submit. Good thing about the forces that there are pretty strong pretests. So, in most cases, if it, your solution passes pretest, it passes system test as well. You don't have to be extremely careful in writing it, but of course, if there is a certain corner case, it might be not present in the pretests. Okay, I pass the pretests. Meanwhile, on the scoreboard, only seven people did so and no other solutions. So, let's switch to problem B. So here we have a tree, uh, and we are given a tree. And finally we can move on this tree from any vertex by at most k edges at once. And we need to find the sum of those distances Okay, this doesn't make too much sense, but I guess we need to find the sum of distances between vertices and three, vertices and the three divided by k and round it up. Okay. So this is a slight twist on the more standard sum of distances problem. How do we how do we accommodate for it? Okay, so what can we do? We can find Yeah, I guess the easiest would be to just uh, for every subtree we will find the num uh, like the total distance over all vertices where the remainder modular k is zero, one, two, and so k minus one, and we can join those things together when we whenever we join two vertices of a tree, right? So we'll just do. Recursive function that takes a tree, finds the answer for subtrees, and then joins the answers in a reasonable way. Yeah, it seems to. Yeah, that should do it, I think. So let's just jump into coding. So here we again, as usual, my standard style of implementing a graph on vertex class. Okay, so here we get adjacent vertices for each vertex. Okay, so here K will probably need to be global. Okay, we create vertices. Okay, we created vertices and then we need to read the tree, so which is n minus one edges. probably have a standard function for reading a tree and a graph. It happens just so often. But here the number k is interspersed with a description of a tree, so it would not be so easy to reuse a function. Might be faster to just code. Okay, so we have scanned the tree. And okay, so when we have a vertex, will have a recursive function. Okay, let's say solve. And what it will do, it will first compute the answer, of course. And it will also compute the number of vertices in the subtree. I guess no, for each of for each remainder yeah, for each remainder, okay, we, what we can do is we can make it, make k access variable k here, if we read it before creating a vertex, so here we can just write count for each remainder and some distances for each remainder. And yes, yeah, this should do it. Okay, so how do we count those numbers? So first, uh, 
initially of course we have this vertex itself and it's some dis some of distances is zero so we have just one vertex with sum of distances equal to zero okay and now we go over all children okay here we need to pass the parent to avoid cycling over the tree so here we'll do v dot solve this so that it doesn't go and then if v equals parent continue so we skip the parent we solve for each child and now we need to update the variables in each node so to update the answer we need to pair the child with all existing vertices right so all the remainder and new remainder So here we have uh, basically we have to take sum of distances there and multiply by sum of distances here. This way we get all combinations, right? Yes. So here we say answer. We just add some distances. Uh, oh no, we need some. Sum of distances. Mm. No, that's not good. Because this way all the remainder things will not be easy. Right, so I guess we need to sum of uh, whole jumps let's say this will store only like whole type k steps okay so here we do on the reminder times some whole new reminder reminder right and then if there is an overflow so if Here extra equals old remainder plus new remainder plus one. Okay, so So this is uh, like the new, yeah, exactly the new remainder we get. So if this remainder is more than k, then all those paths have one more length. So we need to add count times count to add this extra step. Mm. Uh, actually, we can just do this, right? So we can know the whole count, and here uh, we just can add basically how many this remainder gives, like plus remainder plus k minus 1 divided by k. Okay, so this is what we get. So I think answer has been computed correctly, and now we just need to update the count and some whole variables so here we go percent k and so count rem percent k plus equals v dot count new rem some whole rem percent k plus equals v dot some whole new rem and finally if rem is more than k then here we get one extra so for each of them some whole plus equals v count new rem 
So for each one of them we get one more whole step. And that should be it. Oh no, and also the answer, of course. For to answer we need to add V dot answer to take into account all paths within that one. Okay. Yeah, this problem taken me quite a while. Probably there was a way to solve it easier. But let's see whether it works and what are the current stagings. No, surprisingly not many other solutions to it. But it doesn't work on first case. Here k equals 2. And the graph is 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 4, 6. Okay, so there is a chain of length 5 and an extra dangling vertex in the middle. And k equals 2. Okay. So why would it be incorrect? Yeah, it's not actually clear. Okay. So we can debug a bit maybe. Why would we return 15 when the correct answer is 20? And also why the answer is 20 sounds a bit too much. So in total there are 6 times, oh yeah, actually no, 15 is too little because we have 15 pairs, for each of them the answer is at least 1. Yeah, so this is not clear, I guess all these tricks where we go over k are not so correct. Okay, let's see. Why is it not correct? Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's say for vertex number 2, which is isolated vertex, answer is 0 and there is 1, some hole equal to 0. Okay, so for vertex number 5, the same situation. Vertex number 4 is an interesting case, so answer is still 0, which is already not correct. Oh, and I don't... and count... Okay, that's... oh no, yes, 4 is good, 4 is also isolated, 3. So answer is 1, alright, and there is one model... Yes, exactly. Okay, now the tricky case, now we come to vertex number 1, here the answer is 6, because its subtree has 4 vertices, so there are 6, and but it's not true that all these, so this one is already incorrect, because there is one of that requires 2. Okay, this count is correct, and then some hole, okay, so some hole already has, mm-hmm, this is really suspicious, so because it should have been updated. What something went wrong, but what? Okay, I'm probably already losing a lot, and C is not so difficult. Okay, concentrate on this. Okay, so we need to see why what happens here. Again, we update the answer for the child, and then here. It would be, okay, this would be 0, but this would be 2, and this supposedly would update the answer more. Alright. Uh, yes. So this is really suspicious. Okay. Okay, let's see. So we start from vertex 1. Then... 
Okay, so this is the vertex with three adjacent ones. So this is the correct, the one that we are interested in. Okay, so first we found the answer for the child, and which has two children. Okay. Okay, so here answer is already three, which is good. And now we update some hole. Okay, so some hole is now has a one in it. And count, there is a count there, yes. Okay, and now we have this one. Hmm, wait a moment, this is not a good formula. So I have to multiply this by count and add count times v some whole new ram. So this is the correct formula, right? Yes, this is the correct formula. And now it should magically work. Yes, now it magically works. What about integer overflow? So this is up to k. Here we do long. Here do some whole which is long. Here. Yeah, intuitively it looks like there should be no overflows at all. So, I think we are good. Let's try to submit this one. Again, if there were overflows, probably pretest would catch it. So, shouldn't spend too much effort on it. Okay, this one probably works. And now I guess problem C is the natural next one because it took just 15 minutes to solve it. Took too difficult with his new unpronounceable handle. 15 minutes to solve it. Okay, so let's go with problem C. Here, uh, here we have a string and in one move we can swap two adjacent letters. And we want to get a string without substring vk in the smallest number of moves. Oh, and the string is length 75. Okay, that looks like a very interesting problem. So, how would we approach it? Uh, these are some examples. Maybe they can reveal something. vk, vk, 3. Because basically we get, if we get only v's and k's, then we need to put all k's before all v's. So it will be like all k's and then all v's. And we can easily compute like the number of inversions, which means how many swaps are we going to need. I guess more generally, if you look at the ultimate string, basically we look at all letters as not v and k, they split the string into blocks, and each block should be k's followed by v's, possibly zero of each. So it doesn't make sense to ever swap to non-vk letters, so the only thing we do, we can redistribute v's and k's between the blocks. So essentially we can f assume all other letters are fixed. And now we have some set, some number of v's and k's. So for each one of them, we can, we want to in each block make k's followed by v's, but it might be cheaper to actually move k's to the right. v's to the right doesn't make sense to move, they can just stay or v's to the left. And after we move, yes, and after we move, it doesn't make sense to do with them any, anything else because they are now in a good position. Okay, so that seems doable. So basically, we are solving this for each block independently and we, for each letter, we should either move it away or move it to the beginning. So we can just iterate over how many letters we move away for each block, for example, because we have so few letters. Okay, this should be quite fast. Okay, we have a string. Now we iterate over all 
over blocks of letters of V and K. So if S char at E not equal to V and S char at E not equal to K. Okay. We can use a strict to do one more iteration of the loop, not to forget about the last block. Okay, here we have the result. Here we we have just solve for substring from start to i and start equals i plus one. And then we print the result. Okay, so now we solve for a substring that of that consists of just v's and k's. And I guess we shouldn't have a special case. So, okay, so now we have a string of just v's and k's and we need to basically put all, all k's to the left or remove through the right border and the same about v's. So I guess we can iterate over how many k's and v's we are going to remove through the border. All right. Yes, so let's see, let's find the total number of k's and v's. Okay, so here we have a v. Otherwise, we are very surprised. Are they all uppercase? Yes, they are. Okay, here we have the length which we can ignore because we just read the string. Okay, now we iterate over the number of letters moving to the left, number of V, V escape, V escape. Okay, so essentially now we need to form a string that starts with v escape v's. Okay, so we can just find the target position for every letter and then uh, then count the inversions, right? Yeah, I know that will be force power. Maybe it will be too slow though or not, maybe not. 100 to force seems tolerable. Yes, so. Okay, so. Yeah, here we can actually, I don't know, but it's more than 64, so bit tricks are not easy to do. Yeah, but it should be fine. Force power should be fine. Okay, so what do we do here? If we have a K, so here if uh, Okay, we do increment. So if there's not an escape in one, so a k less than equal and uh, k escape and k minus k escape, k escape, then it should go to the beginning after v escape, all v's escape. So it means that the target position is. Okay, let's just move, still fill the array. It's just easier this way. So target position equals uh, 
zero. Okay, so first V escape once and then plus the position of this one. Yeah. Otherwise, if this one escapes, then it should go through after all these and then like this, right? So all these are to the left of it and then a few k's. If we have a v, if it escapes, so uh, then it should just get to this position. Otherwise, target equals, if it doesn't escape, then it should go to the end, but before all non-escaping ones. So that would be nk min minus chi k escape plus av minus one. Okay. And then there's an inversion. And then we increment the result. Here we increment current, of course. And actually we start with V escape plus K escape. I'll see if target they are equal, we should assert, because that means we have a bug and this would be a good way to catch it. Okay, and the here we minimize, and here we return this. Okay, so that's force power. It should be good enough. Okay, some numbers are incorrect. Okay, we somehow managed to do VK, VK for two. How, are we go how did we do it? Now we, yeah, some people sold all three, so we're not not going very fast. Okay, so why did we return two? Okay, let's enable smart testing. So now this is test will run, and we can still get two. This is interesting. Okay. Okay, let's could probably use an additional breakpoint, but this is kind of faster. Okay, so how did we manage to get two? Okay, we made one k. Oh, I guess the problem is that for boundary cases, you cannot escape, right? Okay, right. Yes, there's nowhere to escape. Okay, so we solve. And then these escape to the left. So if start equals zero, they cannot escape. Otherwise, they can. And finally, case escape to the right, so if we are at the end, they cannot ex escape, otherwise they can. Right? Yes, seems correct. Now it should work. Okay, so now only one big test doesn't work. It's a bit sad. VVK, E, VKK. So here Oh, if two adjacent ones escape towards one another, yeah, it doesn't work either. I see. Yes, so how do we handle this case? Because they can't really... Yeah, I guess we don't just need to output one number, but... Because, yeah, because we have some number of escape escaping once and they don't hurt but they basically one escape happens before the other and then the other escape is made more comp 
multiple x, right? So we get the product of the number of escapes. Yeah, but this will be force power to just return a matrix here. Okay. Okay, let's see. So we just build the matrix here, right? And here we just do raise v escape k escape equals score, and then we return the matrix here. Okay, and here guess case escape to the right so here we have the best number for the given number of escapes to the right so initially we have no escapes to the right and we can do it with zero cost okay so here we get this matrix and now we have to kind of multiply it First number of escapes to the left, okay, and zero legs, raise fill and best integer max value. Okay, let's do infinity to be safe. To save from overflows, and finally. So this is the number of escapes we get from the left. Okay, and here in best C equals minimum and best C. Okay, and here we just get best because in the end we will have an empty block, so it will have zero to the right. Yes. The C must mean best C, best A, plus M, B, C, plus A times B. Right. So this should do it. Yeah, got a bit more tricky than I expected, but Seems to me that this one is correct and it's quite complex. I'm surprised it just costs so little. And I'm surprised somebody did it in 15 minutes. Also, I also did 15 minutes, so yeah, it's comparable, I guess. Okay, let's see. I got wrong answer, right? This is bad. Let's see what could go wrong. String without VK. So A times B seems to be a correct formula. And so why could this be a wrong answer? Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, there are two adjacent non VK letters and all escapes do not conflict, obviously. So this would not be problematic. Yes, variables are used, but who cares really? Mm -hmm. This is interesting why it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not clear why it doesn't work. Here we always put a value, there are no continue or something here, right? So 
here we would always, yeah, we would always put a value and hmm. so why it's not correct plus mbc plus a times b yes, also looks correct, but somehow it's wrong answer interesting stuff so how do we deal with this yeah I guess they are a bit more at the problem so far yeah few people got wrong answer on it let's see top people yeah got it from first attempt yeah everybody gets it from first attempt so what could be wrong here um, We have without substance VK, so it's quite concrete and because K's and V's and K's have to come before V's in the same order but it does make sense to swap them. Right, so we have something and then here some other letters. Then yes, for every V they have to go to the end or to the beginning and then get removed. really make too much sense yeah but there is a conflict and you cannot avoid it by yeah yes it should be correct though. minimum possible number of moves on the string is have length 75 hmm. that's really weird stress test probably will not help even because for small tests it might well work yeah let's see why it shouldn't work for all tests though target we feel here mm, yeah so if two letters have different targets and we check that all targets are different so there's probably no bug here Okay, so this escape to the left, and this is the first index. Okay, so B escape to the left, and A escape to the right from the previous one. It would seem that we get A times B extra. Hmm, that's really confusing. So many people cannot get it to work but yeah down there is a problem with the reference solution probably I'm still missing something obvious but what this looks to be good and we cannot do anything else right so we cannot does it ever make sense to escape it Okay. No. Why? There's a key in the beginning. Why would we move it? Let's just not do it. Well, you although let's say we have K, K, V, and then many Ks. Then maybe by escaping a K, a, okay, so test A, K, V, K, K, yeah, let's try this one, A, K, V, K, K, should be doable in two, might solution, might return three, yes, oh, sorry should also give length a yeah, length would be 5 ok so that's a problem right if again that I can sometimes escape no it returns too correctly ok let's do this a k k v v k 
KKK. K, K. Yeah, this test maybe. Oh no, I guess we need one more. Okay. A K K K V V V. And then four Ks. So this should be six and it just might return nine. My case. Yep. Or even twelve. Wow. That's a lot. But we can really just do with six. Yes, yeah, so my solution just incorrect, it seems. Okay, so what do we do? Start with other problem or finish this one? Yeah, I guess let's finish this one. Okay, so why does it return 12? That's a bit strange because we should be at least, oh no, yeah, 9 to swap and then, yeah. And then it's 12. Okay, so the thing is that case can also escape quite nicely. Hmm, yeah, maybe I should rethink. Yeah, maybe I should rethink what happens here. Yeah, let's add two letters one by one and then see. And basically this letter will be put into some position relative to the previous ones. So what matters in the end and we have no Vs and K. Right? So at every moment it basically matters how many pairs of Vs and K we have. No, it also matters of course the entire previous string because it matters. If we move this one to the left, yeah, but if we, okay, I guess we have a few positions where we must insert something. And now when we are moving a V, for example, we cannot put it before uh, any other K. So essentially what matters last available position for a V and last available position for a K. Right. Oh no. K, yeah, it's not after V. Right, so yeah. So essentially last letter that is not K and last letter that is not V. Yeah, so it seems to me that all that matters, right? Because either we try to put in one of those that need to heal. Yeah, completely written solution. Okay, yeah, this didn't go well. Probably shouldn't have spoken about it. Okay, let's rewrite it then. Solution will be simpler. But the need to rewrite it, of course, is not good. Okay, so again, what matters is the total amount of positions that need to be replaced, that need to be corrected. And let's say for them we already paid the move from the beginning to them. And then how many Ks are there in the end and how many Vs are there in the end. So because if we want to put a K, we can either yeah, probably doesn't make it sense to move it further before, right? So if we just put it, for example, last address not V, then any K doesn't make sense to put anywhere. We can just put here. Yeah. It seems so. Okay. Let's rewrite it completely. Just remove this, and this we also remove. Okay, so we have this three-dimensional array, which is the number of VK that need to be fixed. Okay, so N at most, well, actually half of N at most, right? VK, 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 yeah. Yes, and if the order is fixed, means that we need to put something there. I 
guess yeah if the last letter is not V yeah so I guess the number of V's in the end is kind of important number of case in the end does it really matter so we put a V we can just put it here right and it will be fine no but maybe no way why would we oh yeah I guess we could probably want to move it yes I guess we could want to move it okay this problem is tricky much trickier than I expected okay maybe some other way to think about it let's say no but it's still okay Okay, what if we build the strings of k's and v's one by one? So we put either k or v. We know how many inversions that gives, obviously, because we know the sequence of k's and v's in the initial string. And every time we put v and then k, we must put a few other letters in between. But of course, we can put can put more letters if we want. Okay, so the state would be how many V's, how many K's, and how many other letters we used. And we cannot put a K here. Yeah. That should work. Okay, that should be relatively easy. Okay. Okay. this from the beginning yeah probably when I'm commenting I'm still not able to think very good okay stop whining v plus plus equals i equals k plus k plus k plus k plus plus equals i so the y is no plus and no plus plus okay if we find the positions of all letters and now Initially we can do it. the number of operations we got here and now we can put the k v or o right so and position is k plus v plus o okay so oh no and we need to remember the last one Or more precisely, was the last one V or not?
here. Okay, so if there is one more k, the last one was not v, and the last one was not v, then we could can put k, so best uh, k plus uh, 0, k plus 1, v, o, равно mass min of the same, and core plus mass ups. Okay, can we determine easily the number of swaps? From the position, yeah, let's say one, two, three, and three, two, one. We need two swaps, and the total difference is four. Is it always like this? It's just sum of differences. No, counting number of inversions is not done linearly. So it should not be so easy. Okay, so here we need to determine how many swaps are we going to need. To put this letter, if I want to put K, we need to find how many V's were there at this moment. Okay. this letter here we have to take the position of this k and then see how many v's were there before that position and subtract the current number of v's okay this should be good v less than and v. If we put a v, then here this one is one. Yes, yeah, problem took me really lots of time. Okay, v pose v minus k, and here also v pose v. Yeah, and finally. If we can put an other letter, then we, oh, sorry, we get zero here. We get other letter here. Uh, okay, so this will be a pulse O. Which is okay, a pulse O. So this is how many swaps are we going to need. And in the end, Best zero and and oops and k and v and no best one and k and v and no okay pause does not participate good. Wrong answer for last case and gives infinity. Okay. Let's remove the smart testing. Okay. So even VK VK doesn't work. Hmm. Okay. H V here. Otherwise we cannot put case, right? Okay, six. Okay, so now I get twice more every time. No, but yeah, this is how many 
swap this number will participate in. Here we need to divide by two, that's for sure. Now some other cases doesn't oh actually now only the last case doesn't work. No but this is pretty good case to not work. Oh the length is not correct, yeah, I forgot. So length here is eleven. Okay. Now it works. Yeah, that was a sad story about this problem. Instead of fifteen minutes I spent 40, 40 minutes on it. Still, I'm now on second page. Oh my God, still no solutions for the other two problems. I won't be that much far behind, but of course it is sad to spend way so much time. And now I'm 21st place. Not good. Okay, let's see what we have else. What else we have here? D and E have roughly the same cost, so maybe if I like the other one more I can go with E now. Especially since D has no solutions yet, and most people would attempt it. So here we have a grid of two rows and n columns, and we look at rectangles with sum is equal to zero. And the question is, what is the maximum amount of non-intersecting rectangles with some zero? It doesn't sound too complex, so... <laughs> Maybe it does. So there is a quadratic number of rectangles. Of course, big rectangles come from three types. First row, second row, both rows. And in within each type, I guess we have just need to look at equal partial sums and between them we can make a rectangle. It doesn't make sense to have bigger rectangles because it was just for nothing, right? So for each type we have a set of non-intersecting rectangles. We have like three sequences of non-intersecting rectangles and first two sequences also do not intersect with each, interact with each other because they are kind of separate and then there is a third one, the big one and then we just need to solve it find the maximum amount so basically for every rectangle of big segments with big sequence we take it will kind of cancel some amount of smaller rectangles Tangles, and we can probably compute. So first we start with an answer used without using big rectangles, and then we go through left to right. As soon as we have a big rectangle, we have to find all small rectangles cancelled, but we have to not double count, right? So we have to uh, make sure that we don't double count, which means that we have to remember the last. Uh, yeah, that is not clear. So, I guess so for, each, for this rectangle we will find how much it cancels. Oh, but yes, it's not. Okay, so how can one rectangle be cancelled by two of them? Only if one is in the middle and one is yeah, this can be just several. So basically if we decide that a given... Yeah, it's not entirely clear how to handle this part. How to not to double count. But let's think about it for a bit. Okay, and somebody solved E. Suggesting... But well, he spent an hour on it, so maybe still D is easier. Okay, let's look at... D, do we have E? Okay, E is in PDF. Interesting. Okay, is it the right one? Let's try again, just to be sure. Okay, now it's not a PDF, but we can keep the PDF as well. Maybe it'll be useful, okay. So, how to handle those rectangles? Yeah, basically the problem is that big rectangle, it can 
but if we have a big rectangle we cannot really so basically we decide to put a big rectangle we need to f take the sum of small rectangles in the completely inside this one oh and this we can do with interval three right so what we will do essentially we'll have all small rectangles that end up to this point and they will contribute if the previous point is before so basically for all we have like best answer for a given position here we have to add this to all answers yes so this seems to be pretty doable with interval 3 and not much magic let's just do it maybe this implementation type problems is where I can uh, regain some of the lost time ok so then there is a matrix but let's just make them longs so that we can add them freely okay so we have those integers okay so now we have to find uh, the sums uh, okay now we I guess we need to find a left boundary for each right boundary essentially so I guess First equals find boundaries to zero long second or oh, not long int second equals find boundaries t1 long s equals new long and for it here we just find the sum of two rows Yes, in both equals find bound there is S. Okay. So how does find boundaries work? We find partial sums. And partial sums are up to three hundred thousand times ten to the power of nine. Can we afford a hash map of size? Three hundred thousand or should we try to but long is not enough to encode because partial sum can be yeah too much so we should really have pairs but then we can just have hash maps I guess hopefully we can Hopefully there will be a pretest. this number okay mm, starting from this position okay and then we put i plus one there starting from that position yeah that makes sense Otherwise, it's not present. Okay, this is like finding the boundaries. Using hash map, find the zero sum square rectangles. And now we need to do this basically simple thing. So here we have some, some interval three. Which will enter row three. 
uh, okay, public interval three int n. one right because position zero is also possible so first we put uh, yeah well zero is possible for every position it's not interesting okay so now we do so okay And the both we kind of need reversed, right? So here we can just do n minus one minus i to find the sums in the other direction. Yes. So basically, if we find the rectangle here uh, with this position, uh, with this. n minus one minus e equals n minus one minus all both e right so we reverse the array and reverse the value so now it's the was it where it ends and here we do both e less than zero minus one otherwise this okay so this we reversed nicely and got the both array so here if we start if both e exists uh, then we should find the answer over all previous ones right Yes, we should find three Okay, and they will not intersect, so it will be just fine. Okay, we need to have method get max. Okay. Uh I guess long it doesn't make sense because we have a just yeah anyway it got three get max three update so here we put at position both i oh yeah get max actually it's a good point from zero to position i minus uh one right so basically where the previous one ended it should have ended up to i of course yes and here if previous one ended and was i plus one we put god plus one all right okay here we have left and right and here we have okay so we have set take max okay we put basically assign a value and then uh, if first mm, if there is a method three and one we need to add one 
to all elements before okay so actually three always has prefix we add on a prefix and we query on a prefix so this can be fenvic3 right and oh, we also update the value but this should be fine I assume because we update only values where nothing has been added so if we add one on a prefix yeah we cannot How can we? Okay, but we don't need to, to be f super fast. Actually, we can do it stupid tree and be done with it. Um, yeah. Okay, we add one from zero to first i. So if it's yeah. if second i. Zero second i. And in the end, we just print three get max zero n. Okay, so we just need left int right. Three with those three operations, right? Yeah, should be doable. So far, nobody solved D. Not sure why, actually. Seems to be pretty straightforward. Okay, so can we get max and add one? Always have left equal zero. But it's not clear, right? Because. Yeah, it's not clear. Yeah, let's just do normal tree. Okay, max and delta, right? So Okay, so we initiate it and initially it's all zeros. Okay, get max return internal get max zero int n this n equals n zero and minus one the left to right internal get max root rl rr left right if left more than right return zero If rl equals left and rl equals right. Okay, here we propagate if delta root not equal to zero, but on max root we add delta root and then we propagate. Oh no. Yeah. Actually, no, we don't need to, right? Here we can do max root plus delta root. And here we get interim equals rm plus rr divided by 2. Uh, okay, so here if delta root not equal to 0. Then we propagate it down. What do we need? No, right? We cannot have any. So basically every time we go take marks, it's always to the right of the last possible add one, right? So basically delta will always be... So we can just not do anything here and just do... A return mass max internal get max out times two rl rm left mass mean rm right 
and internal git max to rm plus one error mass max left rm plus one right and plus delta root okay take max internal take max zero zero and minus one at one again similar method root error error int error at all okay here if delta root is equal to zero through new runtime exception this should never happen if error equals error max root equals uh, mass max max root one otherwise enter n equals error plus error divided by two if not internal take max well array what's well otherwise internal take max plus one error at well okay and max root equals max 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 root times two plus one max root times two plus two all right and delta here is always zero okay that seems to make sense left right here again we do internal and one zero and minus one left right and here i guess we can copy this one it will be pretty simple similar sorry okay so we need to add one here we add delta here Uh, we increment delta and max does not need to be updated here uh, it's void here we do internal and one here we just return and here we do internal and one for the second part Okay, wait, max plus delta. Okay, this is not good actually. Oh no, but it returned with delta, right? Already. Yeah, so it returned with delta of that one. Okay. So internal at one. And finally we say max root. Here we update the maximum. That's it. Supposedly. Okay. First case doesn't work. We managed to get all four. Let's see. So what are the arrays first? Okay, so first is equal. No, something is not wrong. Yes, this is not good, right? Oh no, actually no, in the first row there are no. Yeah, that's good. That's correct. Zero to three. And both yes, only the last. Okay. Oh, but they can overlap. Yeah, this was pretty stupid. That's why nobody solves it. They can, of course, overlap. What am I thinking about? Yeah, I'm really not thinking well when I'm speaking. Should probably abandon this experiment, but let's finish the today's one. So
so why what is the problem here uh, they can overlap in one line this, uh, yeah, it gives a good example even yes what was I, what were I thinking okay so how can we obtain this again so we have this and we have this and we need to put find the amount that we can cover still in each one we can do that greedily kind of right so if we finished here then we are take this and but still yes it's not clear how to handle this now maybe interval tree will be useful but yeah but what i'm computing is completely not good because they can overlap in one line what were i thinking about okay so what do we do here how do we handle this uh, yeah not easy right so we have on one line they can overlap yeah many of them can overlap right if you have what one 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 then minus ten then one 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 then any segment containing this minus ten works they all overlap yeah that's not good that's completely not good actually it means that we cannot really yeah of course gritty still works right so if we start from some position we can in each line just take first one that appears and but how do we implement it because they are independent kind of right so we cannot yeah so we mm -hmm. so the, there are like two independent parts but they have to begin with the same yes so okay so let's still still we maintain the answer for every position so let's suppose we have a new one ending in this position new item from first row so answer would be maximum of answer like this and not taking this one yes and similar for second because it's not true that we must always take this one right because it might have some sh a few shorter ones inside okay so and because we have two of them we cannot afford to have like a two-dimensional interval three here so there should be some better approach and that approach would be yeah. okay but the answers for which position can be no they can't so they can't so essentially when we have a new answer then for this suffix we get some some additions based on yeah based on those that don't understand this one so it can be completely different every time and we cannot really and because they have to be in sync we cannot no no this doesn't work so how do we solve this problem Just need maximum number 
So it doesn't really make... So basically if you take a big rectangle, if there is at least small one, one small one inside it, we should never take it, right? Yes, because it will be not optimal. So we should really just take... Look if there is a small... No small ones inside it. But if, if there are no small ones inside it... Doesn't it mean that we can somehow... No, doesn't... It doesn't... Does not... There are some sticking to the right, some sticking to the left in each row. And it... Yes, and that means that... Hmm, but maybe... Because this idea star seems to be something unusual. But still we might... want to take it... if the other ones are like intersecting with existing ones and... then... Let's go from left to right. We've taken some set of rectangles already. Now a big rectangle appears. So does it ever make sense to take it if we already taken something overlapping with it? Hmm. Maybe grid actually works. Right, so we go from left to right. We have our best answer. Basically in each row it's finish as early as possible. Now if we have some engine that we can take, small one engine that we can take, we definitely take it. The only problem is we have engine, big one engine in this position. So why would we ever take it? Okay, if it overlaps with something then we shouldn't definitely take it because... Yes, because it will hurt. And it's not clear why, because then we'll have to take at least one less, and basically, so if it doesn't overlap, then we can take it. If... But if we, if there is at least one engine within it, single one, we should take that one, it is still better. If not, then we take it. But then... Basically, when we should replace, we should be able to replace it with two single ones going. So if there are, but why? Oh, because it's two, right? So if later we get one, it might not make sense. No, but still, yeah, it might not make sense to replace one, but. We can go and remember, have we seen what was the latest that we could put here? And basically if by the time we reach this position, this would be a better answer. Hmm, so something greasy works, right? Maybe cannot prove it and I don't have that much time left and well one person has solved this problem so solving it will still be good and okay so again greedy go from left to right greedily take basically as soon as something ends that we can take we take it uh, if we have a big one that we can take, so it means it doesn't intersect. Then we take it provisionally, but later if we encounter, we still remember that we have a big one and before that the boundary lies somewhere. So 
let's see we encounter another big one two big ones and then one overlaps with this and one with that doesn't make sense to switch right so if only two overlap with this it makes sense to switch but if after finding this big one we found one that does not overlap with it before we find two that overlap then again it doesn't make sense to do anything because if later we find something that overlaps uh, yeah basically this space it means that the space is not wasted essentially so it doesn't make sense to do it right so, yes so the thing is if we find one that goes like this yeah but it's not clear because if we find one on the top that overlaps with it then it's not clear we should replace or not we can should kind of remember both possibilities so i guess here we could say we could either have this ending in big rectangle or if we do not take it oh but maybe we should not remember more than one like so we'll have like two solutions basically engine and big rectangle or yes yeah, so if we take one that does not intersect with the big rectangle then it doesn't make sense to remove it anymore right okay that should work mm -hmm. and it should be no decision no interval trees at all right after we find this okay let's see let's remove calls to interval trees but not the interval tree maybe we'll need it again okay so it seems to be holding right so we have two solutions one with big rectangle And the other without so as soon as we find the number we update the one uh, without with uh, yeah so we need to remember big rectangle and two previous engine ones so if you put another big rectangle and then then if later we find even two it'll be better yeah okay so yes okay and then we just go from left to right and do greedy yes all suspicious but seems to be correct okay so here if we have first
Oh, but what we will pick between this one? Oh, but it doesn't matter, right? Because we will always have. Yeah, we'll then have one more possibility to get one more, and it will be good. Okay. Yeah, if this doesn't cur doesn't work, I will lose as badly as the previous match. I probably shouldn't think about it now. Okay. So here, if we have a first, so if first I is more than best noble first, if we can append it to the first one, then uh, okay, we will do it one by one. should not over engineer okay so if this one then plus best no we increment best no balls best no balls first equals i if second i is more than zero if second i is best no balls second plus plus best no balls best no balls second equals i Right, so this way we put the greedy result. Now, finally, if we have balls, uh, so we only put balls after if balls e best no balls first and balls e more than best no balls second, then we can try to put it uh, e, per e best balls plus best no balls plus one more than best balls then best balls equals best no balls plus one Best balls first, best no balls first, best balls second, best no balls second, best balls balls equals i. Okay. Now, if we try to put it uh, more than best balls balls and best. Okay, then we just plus plus best balls, best balls first equals uh, best balls balls, best balls second equals best balls balls, best balls balls equals high. Okay. makes sense. Now uh, here we also try to remove basically if first English best balls first then we can try to remove right so we should try to do and best balls plus one is more than best no balls 
Oh no, best both. Uh, yeah, best no bow. Yeah, best both. Just the same. And then best balls, best no balls. Equals best balls, best no balls, first equals I, best no balls, second equals best balls, second. Right. If second I match best balls, second, and best balls match best no balls. Best no balls equals best balls, best no balls equals best balls first, no balls second equals. <laughs> but why do we need this? Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Also do if best balls 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 plus one. Yeah, the second trick is not sure why we need it. We just not put it. Yeah, this trick we don't need, right? the same we already found mm, yeah this is not clear right so something like this should work but what exactly yeah probably without light you can't see me anymore okay but let's try to still still understand so basically again if we have put balls and then we have found a way to put two intersecting ones after it. So that means three, right? And here we found some other way to make three. It can be different though, right? Different optimum. So for example we had big one and then two small ones. Outstanding, that would be one solution to get three, and here we could have. Oh no, actually, we couldn't, right? So, like one, two, three, right? So, this three basically. So, here we either get this solution or this for three, and there is no middle ground, right? Yeah, so we essentially we get. Two optimal solutions in that case, and that's not good because it can affect what happens later, and we cannot pick one of them obviously. So, this greedy doesn't work. Okay, how do we make it work? Probably no time for the last problem now. Yeah, I have to make this one work, but how? Okay, again, we go from left to right, we greedily put first and second type. Basically, if we have current best, then we have just. But if we can put this one, I guess we can have something like. Well, I guess we can. Basically, we have our states that for no, but still no. Maybe maybe yes. Maybe we can like iterate of a second row, so we can put either small ones or big ones. They should not intersect. And if we put a big one.
then what we care about is the best answer up to this point, right? So So what? Uh, yeah, we need to. No, oh, but there are many. Best answer up to this point. It's kind of easy to compute. Yeah, basically, if you put a big one, then best answer up to next point are updated in some greedy way. Uh, uh, right, but. So what, right? The problem is that they are updated in some in some strange way and it can be No but still like best answer up to this point if we have to find it. We either Ah oh, yeah we have problems that we have best answer up to two previous points and then it's not clear. Mm, yes, I see. But if we have a certain answer, so we have some number k and we want to fit k, we can, with something like binary search, probably find the easy, the earliest boundary. No, we don't know k, yeah. And somehow this has to be that with big ones are almost never necessary, but maybe it's true. No, but this is a good test I have where I can get three like this or I can get three like this and they are both good alternatives and greedy will let me pick one will not pick me one of them and what happens next? Yeah if I do this then this is better if I do this then this is better. Mm. So here we cannot locally decide whether taking this big one is good. So we have to update somehow some data structure. But what one? So we have big rectangle. So we go through bottom line. We put if you put a small rectangle, then you can and the top continue but if you put a big one <laughs> no 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 doesn't, doesn't make sense should be something interesting but what I do certainly doesn't work and should I maybe challenge in six minutes but no successful oh, actually there are successful challenges on first problem and what is it in my room for first problem no challenges but a few locked ones what was the first problem again oh with names yeah I don't know. Could be that all those people have it wrong, but it would take some time to find the bug even. And still I don't have any idea about D. So yeah, maybe one more minute and then if not challenges. Okay, so uh we put a rectangle. We need to find it quickly, but finding it isn't easy. If you go from another one.
Yes, there is another rectangle then, and then it... Uh, yeah, not clear what it will do. Not clear. Okay, let's go to hacking, yeah. Okay. So... This task here, I forgot. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, this one probably. Pretest cover everything, so let's go with hacking the first problem. Okay, code forces as usual. Not extremely fast. Okay, can we sort by this problem? No. Okay, let's look at people. Hi, this problem, right? If yes, otherwise, yeah, this works. Yeah, let's skip right. Um. Yes, this also works, and otherwise equals ans i. Yep. What do we have next? Okay, some dps. What are the constraints in this problem? 50, okay. I guess dp can work. Yes, I guess. I guess this probably also works. What do we have here? Okay. Mm -hmm. If no, otherwise... This is int. No, no, but I guess it works. T too complex, but yeah, it seems to work. Okay, mm what do we have here? Okay, that works as well. So we have this and R I minus K plus one. Yeah, seems good. Well, what can I do? Let's read one more. Yeah, those solution seems to be doing exactly the same as my solution. Some are like doing something a bit more complex was still correct. And this is kind of the problem. So we cannot really do it anything about it. And it's so good. We can delete maybe one more and then we give up. And our place on the court is miserable. So I guess uh, yeah, that's it's all good. It's all good, and not much we can do. Okay, this looks suspicious. At least. If 
if there is no name, then we make them all equal. Yeah, maybe it's good. And somebody hacked something. But what? Okay, probably. You can see that the results now are quite optimistic. We were in 25th place when we refreshed the scoreboard a bit of time ago. Probably now we are even worse. Yeah, 26th place. And I guess after system testing we are not likely to move up, move up significantly. Should have solved D, but got first I got incorrect, uh, incorrect solution with an interval tree. Then incorrect solution with greedy. So, and couldn't come up with something correct, unfortunately. Well, uh, that was it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time, maybe, or maybe I should abandon this contest, this type of contest solving. Well, let's see. Bye-bye.